Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You must go through all the math problems. If there is anything at all that gives you trouble, any math problem that gives you trouble, we have solved, we have gone through almost all the math problems. Any problem that gives you difficulty, you will find a solution to it from day number 251 through 400. This book contains almost all the same problems and in most cases exactly on the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the GR, revised GRE. We have finished all the problems from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE, because the first two books that I just showed you, the first edition and the second edition of the revised GRE, simply do not contain enough quantitative comparison questions to get some extra practice. We started solving from day number 401, some problems out of here, and right now we are on page number 227. Please turn to it. Page number 227, the very first problem that we see there, problem number one. Problem number one, when it was given in the real exam, 87% of people got it right. We are told that M is equal to m is equal to 8 or negative 2. We are told that m is equal to 8 or negative 10. What we are being asked to compare is m minus 3 squared versus 25. m minus 3 squared versus 25. Let's see what we can do. All we have to do is plug in the values here. m we, m we know is either 8 or negative 2. Let's first plug in, let's first plug in 8. So 8 minus 3 squared which is same as 5 squared, which is m is 25, this is 25, the answer is C so far. M can also be negative 2. M, ca M can also be negative 2. So let's plug in negative 2 here. So we get negative 2 and a negative 3, which is going to give us negative 5. And negative 5 squared is also positive 25. The answer is C in both cases. It doesn't matter whether M is 8 or negative 2. answer in both cases is C. Therefore, the answer to the problem is C. Nothing to it. No big deal. Number two, problem number two, problem number two, when it was given in the exam, the percentile was 85, here's, we are, we are to, here's what we are told, we are told x and y are each greater than 1. x is greater than 1, y is greater than 1. And we are being asked to compare 2 times x times y versus 2 times x times 2 times y. Now you could actually plug in different values of x and y and play around with it, plugging in numbers here. You could do it that way or you can simply solve it algebraically. Algebra in this problem is pretty straightforward. Here is how it goes. We see 2 on this side, we see 2 on that side, that column column A and column B, they bo both have a factor of two commas, divide both columns, divide column A and column B by two. If we don't divide both columns by two, the two drops out. Since we know that X and Y, they are both greater than one, they are both positive quantity, they are both positive quantities, as, as long as you're multiplying both columns or dividing both columns by a positive number, you're fine. You can divide or multiply both columns by a negative number. Why? I'm going to show you very, very quickly, very simple example. Very simple demonstration here. Uh, we know that 3 is more than 2. Nobody's going to argue with that. So in this case, if they are asking which, which column is bigger, column A or column B, the answer is column A. Of course, 3 is more than 2. If you were to take the 3 and the 2 and multiply both of them by 2, multiply both of them by 2, column A is still bigger. Column A is still bigger. But on the other hand, instead of multiplying by 2, if you want to multiply both, both columns by negative 2, 
Now here we get negative 6 and here we get a negative 4. Now negative 4 is bigger than negative 6. Answer is no longer A. Answer is B. We cannot multiply the two columns by negative numbers. We cannot, we cannot divide both columns by a negative number. But we can divide both columns or div we, could, we could multiply or divide both columns by any positive quantity that we want. It doesn't change anything. Do you understand? It doesn't change anything. So we know x is greater than 1 which means x is a positive quantity. Let's divide both columns by x. Let's divide both columns by x. Let's divide both columns by y. That's it. We're done. So what are we left with? In this column everything goes away. We are left with 1 versus, versus what? What are we left here? We are left with, I must have crossed out something x and y are gone. It can be this simple, can it? 2 times x times y. It can't possibly be that simple. 2 times, it is that simple. 2xy versus 2 times x times 2 times y. That's it, we are done. The answer is b. We are left with 2 here. 1 versus 2. That's all. Let's move on to number 3. Let's move on to number, number 3. Essentially what we did, we divided both columns by 2xy. If we divide both columns by 2xy, of course 2xy goes away here, we end up with 1 here, 2xy is going to go away, we're left with 2. Number 3. Number 3 is the geometry problem. 87 was the percentile. We are being asked to compare. Here is the picture that is given to us. We are told that this angle is 50. This we are told is x and this we are told is y. And we are being asked to compare 3 times x versus y. 3 times x versus y. Well, if this angle is x, uh, if this angle is 50, if this angle is 50, this angle and that angle, they are opposite angles. So if this is 50, if this is 50, then this is also 50. x is 50. So it's, this is 3 times 50, which is just 150. How much is y? Well, this is a straight line. This is a straight line, and this angle is 50. So y must be 180 minus 50. Whatever is left over after you subtract 50 from, uh, whatever is left over from 180 after you take away 50, this is 130. So we have 130 over 150, 130 versus 150, the answer is A. The answer is A. That was number 3. That was number 3. Let's move on then. Number 4. Question number 4. Question number 4. Is 88 percentile. Another easy question. A negative 2 raised to 8 versus negative of 2 raised to 8. Negative of 2 raised to 8. Pretty simple, straightforward deal here. 2 raised to 8, of course, is going to be a positive quantity, but then we have a negative outside. Since this negative sign is outside, this entire quantity remains negative. Whereas this negative is within the parenthesis, within the parenthesis, a negative number being raised to an even power, being raised to an even power becomes positive. Becomes positive because negative times negative is positive. Negative times negative is positive. So if it's a number, a negative number, and you raise it to an even power, it will always be an even. It will always be a positive quantity. What that quantity is, is really doesn't matter to us. We are not interested in what that quantity is. What we simply have to understand here is that whatever that quantity is, is a positive quantity. Is a positive quantity. This is a negative quantity. Positive quantity is always going to be greater than negative quantity. The answer is A. The answer is A. Let's move on. Number 5. Question number 5. In question number five, we are told that the sales personnel, sales personnel, drop to eighty-five percent. Well, however many people we had in the on, on our sales team, 
the new number of people in the sales team is 85% of what it was in the beginning. Sales personnel dropped two. It dropped to 85%, not by 85%. We're not reducing it by 85%, we're reducing it to 85%. So if we started out with 100 people, we let 15 of them go and now we're down to 85. It, it dropped to 85%. As a result, as a result we are told, as a result, sales drops by 500. Sales drops by 500. Let's see if I'm reading it correctly. Decrease of 500 in the number of monthly sales. Decrease of 500 in the number of monthly sales. Decrease of 500 drops by 500 units per month. Drops by 500 units. Are you with me? Here's what we are being asked to compare. Column A, we are being asked to compare percentage drop, percentage drop in sales. We can stop right there. We can stop right there. It really, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what he says in column B. It really doesn't matter what he says in column B. It makes no difference whatsoever. There is no point in wasting our time in column B. Because how can we figure out the percentage drop in sales? We know that the sales drop by 500 unit. We all we know is that sales drop drop by 500 units. Simply knowing that it dropped by 500 units does not enable us to draw, figure out the percentage drop. In order to figure out the percentage drop, we have to know either the beginning number or the final number. It dropped by 500 unit from this number, then we can figure out the percentage drop, or we can, uh, or they have to tell us that it dropped by 500 units, and now the new sales figure is this, and then from that, of course, we can figure out the original sales figure, and then we can figure out the percentage change. But simply knowing that it drops by 500 unit, anything, a change in 500 in anything, does not enable us to figure out the percentage change. We have to have, to, we have, to have the reference point, the point of reference, the initial point, the beginning point, uh, point of reference, as I said. We don't have that here. This is a big question mark. This is a big question mark. This quantity, not this rather. I don't mean to, I need, I need to put a question mark there. This quantity right here, what they're asking here, percentage drop in sales, is a big question mark. And if that's a big question mark, what difference does it make? This is the mood point. What this quantity is, is a mood point. What this quantity is a mood point, because if you cannot figure out this quantity, what are we going to compare this quantity against? There's nothing, even if, if, even if we waste our time figuring out column B, what are, once we have the figure in column B, what are we going to compare it against? We have nothing in column A to compare it with. The answer is D. The answer is D. Just to, just to satisfy your curiosity, in column B they were talking about the percentage drop, percentage drop in sales personnel. Well, percentage drop in a sales personnel was 15%. They tell you right there, it dropped to 85%. If it dropped to 85%, the percentage drop was 15%. As I said, as we said before, before we had 100 people on the sales team, now we have 85 people on the sales team. So the percentage drop in a sales personnel was 15%. That was the easy part. But it, it was point later that that exercise was futile. It's not going to get us anywhere. What are we going to compare it against? What this figure turns out to be is a mood point. It's a mood point. It serves no purpose. It has no practical implication whatsoever. When did we learn the term mood point in our vocabulary lessons? Just give me one second, I'm pretty sure, oh, day number seven. Vocab day seven. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in GRE, GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day number seven, and you will see a video will pop up where you will learn the word mood point along with some other useful and interesting word to help you raise your score in the English portion of the exam. Just because we are here for math part, does not prevent us from improving our vocabulary as well. Day number seven is the video. I think this is all I have for today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.